Rule number six, starting to get into some good stuff. There is no money. There is no spoon. For those of you who are like myself, might be Matrix fans, you may get this at a little bit of a different level than normal. There is no money. There's only credit in circulation. There's private credit and then there's public credit. And if you remember that there is no money, you won't get in trouble for doing something like asking the IRS for money. You won't get in trouble for like uh, robbing a bank for money, right? Because you'll realize there is no money. But the cool flip side of that is that if there is no money, there must be something else going on. And there is. It's your private credit. It's your energy. It's your signature. And trust me, it's worth more than all of the public credit that's out there. And in fact, they actually had Alan Greenspan, when he was still the chairman of the Federal Reserve, actually interviewed on the History Channel program about the Federal Reserve and about money, and he actually disclosed to the whole world that Federal Reserve notes are not backed by anything. Well, what he said was, they're not backed by gold. They're not backed by silver. Because what they're backed by is the full faith and credit of the people of the United States. Oof, your credit backs the Federal Reserve? Well, wait a minute. If your credit can back the Federal Reserve, doesn't that mean that you can just use your credit? You don't really have to convert it into another form of currency, do you? Mortgage loan application, kind of the same thing. The mortgage loan application is actually a credit exchange. You're going to exchange your private signature for discharge of an indebtedness. The indebtedness was created by a purchase and sale agreement. And unfortunately, I can't go into great detail on mortgages and specific and deeds of trust and all of that because I really want to stay away from interfering with commerce. But suffice it to say that if you pick up the handout and you do some of the research and you can contact me by Skype or by email and let me know, hey, I'm doing the research and I'm getting this stuff and I want to know which direction to go in, I'll be very happy to steer you in the right direction. We've got outstanding websites that are already on the handout and I'll tell you which ones to go to. And you can learn all about deeds of trust and mortgages and the remedy for them and the whole nine yards. Here's a specific promissory note, still in rule number six. There is no money, only credit, public credit and private credit. And no one can ever require you to use public credit. In fact, if any entity or anyone is requiring you to do business with a third party in order to do business with them, it's a violation of RICO. The damages for violating RICO are tripled and they're automatic. You don't have to prove anything. You just send them a letter that says you violated RICO. The original contract was for $1 million, so I've tripled the damages to $3 million. Please find the enclosed invoice or statement of account. Kind of like what the credit card does to you, right? It has nothing to do with whatever else was going on. You just sent them a statement of account out of the blue. There's, by the way, a really cool story about a couple of guys in California who did that. They sent out statement of accounts to every corporation in California. They got the list of corporations from the corporation website. About half of them sent in the money or the payment on the invoice, right? What they did was they created a really nice invoice and it said uh, invoice for $395 for services rendered. And in these corporate structures, if they're big enough, they get an invoice like that, they're not going to spend $500 having people track down whether we actually had a contract or who this party is. If it's under 500 bucks, their rule is just send them a check. Now, some of these guys actually caught on and complained to the AG's office. Look what these guys are doing here. I mean, they didn't send, we don't have any contract with them. What's going on? It gets all the way through court. These two clever blokes actually took the time to pay the IRS their cut. They collected millions and they described 40%. Here's the IRS, here's your cut. So when it got down to it, the judge said they didn't do anything wrong. Let them go. And the IRS couldn't come after them because they'd already been paid. It's all right out of the Uniform Commercial Code, which is also included in the handout, sections one through nine. 
and it has to do with something called a statement of account or an invoice. Upon receipt of either a statement of account or an invoice, the party receiving it always has the same options. You can do nothing, in which case you owe the full amount. You can argue it. I don't know who you are. I didn't do business with you. Uh, this isn't Friday, whatever it is. You can argue it, in which case you owe the full amount. Or you can correct it and return it. What should you correct it to? 20 cents, 10 cents, zero, whatever it is. You always have the same options, right? Correct it to zero and return it. This is another form of promise to pay. We're still in rule number six. There is no money, only credit. A trust receipt with promissory note. You can find that there are bonds with promissory notes and there are trust receipts with promissory notes. And the promise to pay is included with everything. And until the day comes where we can actually create money, all we have is our promise to pay. Whatever is going on, whatever obligation is created, whether it's a statement of account that you ignored and they sent you three of them and now you owe the amount of the statement of the account, whether it was an invoice and you ignored three of those, once again, we have that magic number three, which we're going to get into in just a little bit. It's always the same deal. Always correct anything that's incorrect. Correct it to zero. In fact, when I first started learning this and learning that I didn't have to use this form of public credit, I was going out getting credit everywhere I could. And I was converting public credit into private credit. And when they actually sent me that statement of account or that invoice, I just corrected it to zero and returned it. And after a while, I realized that I was spending a lot on mail because I'd open these things up and I'd have to stamp them and correct them and I'd have to put them back in another envelope and I'd have to pay for new postage and send them out. I realized that the cost of the postage was cutting into my profits. So I discovered that I could stamp the envelope itself, return to sender, paid in full. Didn't have to spend any postage, the postage was already paid. Worked great. There is no money, only credit. Public credit and private credit. And no one can require you to use public credit. In fact, they can't actually require you to use private credit either. Gold change around your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth, nothing to me. You could be rolling 22s, nothing to me. You're listening down with the truth, now that's something to me. Know thyself, seek and ye shall find. I tell you this now, it's in no African mind. Searching diamonds, gold, silver, platinum, them the kind of things, illusions you fathom. Yeah, they call it magic. Right, your rap is tragic. I know. Clever what they done, fantastic. Come against me now, you end up in a straight jacket. I'll prove you illiterate. One question, the language. Now who's the pickle in the sandwich? This kind of knowledge that you're hearing will damage you, destroy you. Don't worry, I'll employ you, get you back on track, so you can defend your own attack. Gold chain round your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth, nothing to me.